Why? 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 Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Why Ooze podcast, the number one podcast that helps you pass time. And we do that by inviting, you know, great entrepreneur hosts like Savannah here, you know what I'm saying, on a platform to educate us coconuts, especially myself, Pony more, because I always got a lot of questions. I realize the older I get, the more curious I become and the more interested I see the world, how the world is, you know what I'm saying? But Savannah, man, thank you for coming on the platform. I really appreciate you. And uh, first of all, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for uh, your service for, uh, you know, Savannah's a vet. First of all, you know, serving our country in America. And she's also an entrepreneur, man. Without further ado, did I miss anything else, Savannah? Uh, no, no, not yeah. at all. <laughs> Thank you so much, Poonie. I appreciate it. Um, so, hey, everyone. Uh, it's super, super excited to be on this. Thank you so much to Poonie and the entire YU's team uh, for allowing me this platform to come and share with you guys, uh, you know, my story, my background and what I do. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I was born in LA, uh, but my parents didn't see fit that me and my brothers would grow up there. Um, you know, part of LA is not the greatest, uh, to raise kids. And so, um, they ended up moving us back home to American Samoa. Um, and so that's where I grew up. That's where my parents are still at right now. And so I graduated high school there, you know, home of the sharks, go Samoana, um, and then c came out trying to look for what everybody looks for, right? The American dream. Mm -hmm. Went to college, uh, did it the super traditional way, got student loans, got FAFSA, uh, realized I couldn't pay for it that way, right? Even with all my student loans and my FAFSA. So ended up joining the military after that. I went active duty, uh, did that for about six years. Got stationed at Texas. I got deployed twice. Uh, it was an amazing experience. I know that uh, a lot of our Samoan people, uh, you know, are serving right now. So thank you guys for your service. Yeah. Um, you know, especially all the vets that are still out there that that have gotten out. Thank you guys all for your service as well. You know, it's not easy, um, but we know that the military does give us an opportunity to be able to provide for our families and also gives us an opportunity to figure out what it is that we want to do, right? <laughs> so it's uh, the military, I always say, is probably the the easiest job in the world, but mentally it's not the easiest. And the only reason why I say it's the easiest is because they tell you what to wear and they give you what to wear. They tell you where to be. You know, they put clothes on your back, right? They tell you a time. They give you food. They put a roof over your head. And they pay you to, to do it, right? They give you all the training. Um, you just have to be able to absorb all of that and figure out what works for you um and then uh, ended up getting out uh my daughter was turning double digits and so I wanted to be home more it was you know nothing bad I just kind of wanted to be home more to be more present with her and then um went back to school got to use that amazing GI Bill ended up nice. getting my bachelor's in criminal justice uh, which was great I thought I was going to go to law school uh, boy, did the Lord have a different route for me, um, <laughs> and ended up getting a job at the airport. You know, how many of our people are working at the airport right now? Thank you guys all for what you do. Um, I have a lot of friends and family members who still work at the airport. And, uh, I always get told that they're the hardest workers out there. Right. And so, uh, made it all the way up to assistant general manager. And then I got told that I was capped, uh, at my pay after being there for six years and I didn't want to leave uh, and go into another position or go start a new job somewhere else and then have to start from, from the bottom. Yeah. I know that might sound selfish to people, um, but you know, I just didn't, I felt like I gave six years and I know that might not seem like much, but I, I made it all the way up right to management and just to be able to, to get told that I was capped at my pay that didn't sit right with me. Um, and so an opportunity presented itself for me to be an entrepreneur and do what I do now, which is I'm in finances. And whew, I'm so, so excited to be able to share that with Puni and all of you guys today. So uh, that's what I do now. I own my own business. I'm an independent contractor, entrepreneur, uh, being able to share uh, how financial literacy is, is impacting all of us Samoans and Islanders uh, all the way out there. So, Yeah, great. Yes. 
<laughs> great, great background. Great, great way to put it. Gee, I mean, you put everything down. It's just laid it all out there. We know now everybody know who Savannah is, baby. But first of all, man, before you start, man, I'll go ahead and drop a file open for your workers at the airport and for yourself, you know? Yes. Man, this is your time, sis. Go ahead, man. Educate us, you know? So what? what's the plan? What, what do we got here? What do you have to share with the Why Oops po podcast? It's financial literacy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a lot of what we see, and I say we because I have an entire team. They're they're all business partners. They're uh, they're not under me. They don't work for me. We're all business partners. We're all entrepreneurs. Eighty percent of us are Samoans, which is amazing, right? Um, we all come from our background. We already know our culture, right? We take care of our own, but and it's nothing toward our parents. They just didn't know. A, a lot of our parents and where we where we grew up they didn't have this type of financial literacy. And yeah. what I, what I mean about financial yeah. literacy is um, we know how to budget, right? We know how to budget, right? We know mm -hmm. how to pay our bills. We know how to work hard, but we were never told about what the actual American dream was, which is how do we, how do we have our money make money? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The regular American dream. And you guys can all comment on this too, right? The regular American dream that all of us, all of us know is, you go to school, right? Our parents always say, you know, right now, I'm not like, okay, go to school, mm -hmm. graduate, you go to college, get a degree, go get a good job, right? And then you work for 40 years and then you retire at 65 and you work off of whatever you made, right? Yeah. But yeah. there's something out there called what we call the 40 40 40 scam, right? You work 40 hours a week for the next 40 years just to retire off of 40% of your income that you made. Mm. Interesting. That does not seem right to me, right? And the only reason why I say that is because I have so many, you know, my in-laws right now, right? Like my, my, my father-in-law retired and he only, his retirement only lasted two months. He had been in the workforce. He's 72 now. He had been in the workforce you know, since, since he brought his entire family out to, to the States, right. Over literally probably over 50 years of working. And yet he ran out of retirement in, in two months. Wow. Right. So now we're his retirement plan. Right now. Think about that. How are we supposed to make our retirement money last? Right. There's going to be so many different, different topics that I'm about to talk about. Right. But one of this is our retirement right? Mm -hmm. Who out there has a 401k, right? These are the traditional retirement plans, right? 403b, if you're a teacher, 457. Um, but 401k is one of the biggest. If you're in the military, you probably have a TSP, right? Or if you were a little more educated uh, on finances, they probably introduced to, to all of you an IRA, traditional IRA or a Roth IRA, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the biggest thing that all of these accounts have in common is they're tied to the market, right? So if everybody knows about the market, right? The stock market, if the market goes up, your money goes up. But if the market goes down, so does your money, right? So what a lot of people don't understand is when we go and get a job, right? We're signing all that paperwork. When we, when we get signed on, we go to HR, they give us, hey, this is what you're going to be paid. Oh, by the way, we also have this retirement plan. Uh, you're just going to put away, you know, put away this amount uh, and then forget about it until you're 59 and a half or you're 65 when you want to retire. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, for us youngins, right, my brother putting over here, right, 21, <laughs> he's not thinking, right, about him being 65 right now. He's right. young, he's a stud, right? He's working mm -hmm. his butt off. Like, He's only thinking about his money that's incoming now. It's like, man, 65 is, that's that's like 40 years from now. Why do mm -hmm. I care about that, mm -hmm. right? But that's the best time to care about it is right then because by the time you start to, to notice it too late, right? Now, Puni's growing up a little, say he turns 30, right? Now he, he's married, he's got kids and now he's starting to think about retirement. So now he has to play catch up for those past 10 years that he forgot about it. Right. So is, a lot which is the standard for a lot of Polynesians and then yeah. Exactly. Right. Or a lot of us Polynesians, and I say us because I was it too. Uh right, living paycheck to paycheck. 
right? How are we supposed to know? We everybody has a everybody has a bank account, which means that we're putting money away into savings, right? But like my brother Foodie here, you're gonna put in a hundred dollars today. In like six months, if you go and check that hundred dollars, if you didn't touch it, it's probably still gonna be a hundred dollars or a hundred dollars in like five cents, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? So if you're only putting in a hundred dollars for the next forty years, right? That's what. 1200 times 40 years, however much that is, that's ex yeah. the exact amount that you're going to get. But our goal here is to help educate our community on how are we able to make our money make money. Yes, the stock market is one of them. If you guys out there have a retirement plan, congratulations. Now, I'm happy that you have one, but I also, what my main goal is to make sure is that you know that there's other options out there for you to protect your retirement plan, right? Mm -hmm. One way to do that is under insurance, right? Now, the biggest conversation, and I love having this with Islanders, right? Especially our Samoan community is a lot of a lot of our community are like, oh, you guys, it's a scam or like, you're just trying to make money off of me and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, that's not it, right? We've all dealt with Falavilavis, right? Mm -hmm. Our uncles, brothers, dads, cousins, son just, just passed away or he's getting married and we have to put in, right? Yep, yep. Either one. One of the biggest one is the funerals. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine if that specific individual had life insurance, right? Mm -hmm. It's one thing for Puni to give my family money out of the goodness of his family's heart as a gift. And it's another thing for our families to be like, Puni! Uh, we're all putting our every uh, every cousin and sibling is putting in a thousand dollars for uh, uncle's funeral. Where's your thousand dollars? If if Puni's family is like struggling, but at the same time, he doesn't want to let down his family. What do you think he's going to do? Either pay the rent or give up the thousand dollars for the follow of it. Everybody's been there. Yep. Everybody's been there because I've been there multiple yep. times. Especially right. Yes. In America. Yep because right and and it's nothing against our parents but every time we come out here i know that a, a lot of our traditional parents too uh, back at home especially if they're back at home they feel and i i, I always deal with this too with, with a lot of my cousins right uh, a lot of the kids that come out here for college right i know that their parents because they're going to to live the american dream even if they're going to college and they're college students they think that their kid is now rich because they came into yeah. America. So they're, they're, it's the, money that, kids, uh, it's the money that we're not used to, you know, exactly. you figure in a, in Samoa, I think the average is what maybe, for example, I think even $12 back then, I'm only recording from in the nineties was out when I was out there in the late nineties. I think if you made about $12 an hour, you would, you'd be living good in Kukuila in America Samoa. So to come out here in America and to get more than that, it's a different it's a different uh, thing that people look at, you know, especially as Samoan, at least for my experience. $500 uh, every week, it was kind of like, man, I'm good. But not, like I'm, you said, you know, I'm not yep, thinking I'm, about, I'm not educated with the um, investment, I'm not educated with having that money that I'm already making, be able to stretch, you know? So yes, carry on. Mm -hmm. No, you're good. Um, so how are we able to, to help actually take care of our families back at home? And the biggest misconception that we always forget about is taking care of ourselves first. Mm. It's not selfish, right? But it's, it's more along the lines of, yes, can you still be able to send money back to your families at home? Absolutely. Do they really need that extra thousand or $2,000? Probably not. <laughs> Right. But we love our family so much that we send whatever it is that they ask for. Right. Mm -hmm. But what we also tend to forget sometimes is we also need to put them on a budget. If we're going to be on a budget because we're doing whatever it takes to be successful for our families, we're going to make the temporary sacrifice now so that we have the permanent gain later. Right. Temporary sacrifice for permanent gain. Right. And again, how do I do that? And how does our team do that? Uh, which by the way, we're all with Global Financial Impact. That's the company that we partner with, right? They handle our payroll and things like that, but we do it with under life insurance. It's mm -hmm. called an index universal life plan. So it's an indexing account, right? 
Uh, you guys can Google it, right? And just like any plan, right? 401k would be the same thing, TSPs, right? Just like any plan, you're going to have good and bad reviews. I tell people this all the time. There's a lot of people that I, I sit with and they're like, oh my gosh, this plan sounds great. And then like the very next day when I'm about to meet again with them to set up their plan, they're like, hey, I saw all these uh, these reviews and these guys saying that this is a scam. And I'm like, okay, all right, cool. Did you also go and check uh, the videos about your 401k? And they're like, no, what do I have to do that? I was like, did you also go ask your financial advisor about your 401k? And they're like, no, <laughs> like, what's the difference? What's the difference, mm. right? The difference is here and what we teach is we protect your money. Not only are you guys working very, very hard for your money as it is, we protect that money that you're working for. And the cherry on top is it comes with life insurance. Now, a lot of people always say, wow, that sounds too good to be true. I was like, well, the only caveat is you do have to qualify, right? And I always say that having some type of coverage is better than none. Because let me ask you, Puni, right? If anything were to happen to you right now, right? Would your family be able to take care of your expenses, but also be able to take care of themselves with the with the income that you were bringing in? For me, yes. Right? Do they have coverage? Yes. Both me See? and my wife and kids, because we... It's a, like you said before, it's a getting uh, educated yep. on it. So it's a, uh, yeah. you asked me uh, 20 years ago, that will be a, a different answer, but it's just, yep. a, a, it's the benefit of military families, you know what I'm saying? So it's like a lot of those exactly. stuff, but not everybody from Samoa all went to the military. So it's, nope. this is a good educational, uh, informational stuff for coconuts. It is. It is. And it's just making sure that we understand one, each other. And two, you know, don't get me wrong. Are there, you know, I'll be straight up. Are there agents out there who want to literally think more about themselves, meaning they make more money if they set a higher plan for you and it's structured. And I say structured, if it's structured incorrectly, absolutely. Absolutely. But anybody who knows me, anybody who knows anybody that's on my team, right? Um, literally, our way, our hearts of being able to give back to our community is we want to be able to structure your policies correctly so that it benefits you more than it benefits us. Uh, why are we on a crusade for that? Because we were all those people who got their policies structured improperly. Mm -hmm. So imagine if that got done to us, and we kind of got screwed. We don't want that to happen to you guys, yeah. right? And so imagine being able to show up to a a, a funeral, right? Or a, a family gathering for somebody who died, right? Instead of, and no offense to any anybody out there, <laughs> don't take offense to this, but imagine being able to show up with a million dollar check or a $500,000 check to cover your family compared to... A fifty dollar, a fifty thousand that will take a few months since a few weeks. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, would you rather me and Pony show up to a service for your loved one with fifty dollar flowers or five hundred thousand dollar check? Which one? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So that's what I mean when it when it talks about having coverage, right? But also protecting your investment, protecting your investment because there are so many articles, there's so many books out there. So many YouTube and podcast uh, videos that talk about, you know, what the, how we always say it is, this is what the rich do with their money. This is how the wealthy stay wealthy, mm -hmm. right? Borrow do we money. ever, exactly, right? Do we ever like think about that? Like, hey, how does the, how does the rich stay rich, right? I'm not a huge, I'm not a, I'm not a huge Donald Trump fan, right? However, and this is not a political call, I promise, uh, I'm not a huge Donald Trump fan just because I know he's super blunt and he says whatever he wants to say. Uh, and, you know, I know it can, it, it can offend some people. But on the flip side of that, if you look at Donald Trump and what his what his businessman tactics are, he's a great businessman. Mm -hmm. He's a great businessman. Right. And so I know that there was a. I apologize. I don't remember how long ago it was, but there was a debate that he had with him and Hillary Clinton. And Hillary Clinton had asked him, hey, 
um, you or not asked them, but told them like, hey, you take advantage. Like you take advantage of all the tax codes um, for the rich. And he goes, yes, I do. <laughs> He's like, yes, I do. Isn't that why they're, they're there to begin with? Like, it's not, it's not my fault that not everybody knows about it. And right. So figure it out. No. Exactly. Right. But think about it. If the rich have the secret to success, if your family was rich and you guys had the secret to success, the secret to being rich, other than sharing it with your closest families and friends, would you really want to go out there and share it with everybody else? Probably not. Mm -mm. Right. But like I said, this is a, a, it's not a new concept. It's been literally in place since like the, since before the 1990s, it's called obviously before that it was called whole life insurance, but it has upgraded so much in the past literally decade that it just keeps getting better and better and better. Right. So it really, really is important for, for all of us to be able to go and educate yourselves on, you know, the different strategies that are out there, what an index universal life actually is, right. How to protect your money, uh, really, because you get the best of both worlds. Right. Um, we also do something called what we call a million dollar baby. Um, imagine if you have a brand newborn baby and you open up uh, a savings plan or sometimes we call it a college plan or even a retirement plan for them. I know it might sound weird on a brand new newborn, right? Mm -hmm. Opening up, a, a, what do you call it? A retirement plan for them or a college plan for them. But imagine you're you're starting them while they're young. By the time they're 18, if you're structuring it properly and you're you're dumping money in there, they'll have over and I'm I'm just literally just throwing out numbers, fifty thousand dollars worth of tax free money they can access to either go to college, money. tax free. Yes. So tax for example, free. I got a question, Savannah. So when, just for that, as an infant, you know, like how much money are you talking about? As an example, to put aside for your infant child, what are you talking about here? A couple of my clients that I started with, they do a hundred dollars a month. Okay, hundred dollars a month. Now, coming back to coconuts, a lot of them, well, a lot of us, as you experienced before, is a hundred dollars is is a lot to to put it's into a, a savings account. Uh, I remember times when I used to uh, put money in the savings, and then uh, the following week I I go pull it out, right? Yeah. And uh, it goes again with what you were saying with funerals, mm -hmm. five is all that. Uh, it always has to do with the family or even myself too. Yep. Uh, that's kind of tough though with the coconuts. Like, well, how can you know what is, what is it that you guys came up with where it can be like a thing where, you know, we get our paycheck, but we're not thinking about that money that we're putting away. Now, are you talking about something where, because it's standard every every regular corporate job there's a four hundred one k already inside, and a lot of time it's, it's they match us to I think uh average is always four percent or six percent. Mm -hmm. Then the company, so it ends up being 12%. And a lot of us coconuts don't really know what the hell that is. It just sounds good that we have some money saved on the side. And like you said, you're not really gaining a lot. And it takes a, a, a many years to even get 40% of that back versus what you're you're talking about is this life insurance. Is it something where we can like as, as an employer myself, stop my 401k that I have and just invest into what you're talking about? Is that something that you're talking about? Like replacing the 401k that I have? Or are we talking about just a whole different, you know, just insurance itself? Well, both. And the reason why I want to say both is because if you think about it, a 401k, right? You are going to have tax liabilities that come with it, mm -hmm. right? So obviously a prime example, say you do have $10,000 in your 401k, right? I can't tell you like, Hey, that's why I say, when I say options, like these are, this is another option for retirement. But if you have $10,000 in your 401k, if you mm -hmm. even go and borrow from it, or say you want to close it out and, you know, take that money out so that There's you don't lose any money, right? It's a penalty and taxes. Mm -hmm. If you're not 59 and a half. Yes. That is so correct. I'll be nice and say 30% just because it's an easy number, mm -hmm. right? So 10,000 times 30%, like you literally just paid back Uncle Sam $3,000. So mm -hmm. out of that 10,000, you're only going to get seven grand. Correct. Right. And so 
what our clients do when we, when we talk to people about this stuff is, like I said, I'm really, really huge on options. Hey, mm-hmm. we're just giving you the option, right? Yes. Will you have a tax liability for uh, like that 3000, obviously, right? But it's depending on whatever option that you want to do. If you want to stay in, in the 401k, great. Congratulations, you still you still have a retirement plan. I'm very proud of you that you still have one. There are a lot of us Polynesians out there who don't even have one, right? Who don't even have mm-hmm. one, work multiple jobs, and we haven't even thought about retirement. We're just literally living paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. Retirement's mm-hmm. not on our mind. But if if what we're saying, right, the services that we're providing when we're talking about indexing funds, right? If that is something that you're interested in, then that's a decision that you would have to make because you already know what the tax liability is, right? I'm not going to tell somebody, hey, just go take it out and come bring it over to me. Like, just do that. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, I have to pay 30% back. And I'm like, oh, shoot, my fault. Like, no, I literally tell them, hey, this is what it's going to be. It is up to you. Just know that obviously the 401k is tied to the market. If the market goes up, right, your money goes up, obviously in case, and if you're following the trends, right, of history right now, Mm -hmm. uh, if we go into another recession, all that money is gone, Mm -hmm. right? Compared to an indexing fund, right, if you choose to do that, if you choose uh, to put your money in in this type of account, uh, this type of plan, it protects that investment. So if the market does go down, if the market crashes, you still have that account saved at the percentage rate that it, it dropped. So you'll never lose money in these accounts. And is this the one that I hear? Um, this uh, Is this the one where you you can actually borrow money from your own self after a certain yes. amount of a year? And then the good, the benefit of that is because you don't get tax off of it. And then you... Uh, as long as you put it back into it, you, you pretty much, uh, you don't also lose the value. For example, yes. uh, coconuts, uh, what I'm talking about. If I had $10 in the life insurance, just making it easy, and I borrow $3 from that life insurance of mine, I do have a certain amount of contract day that I'm supposed to pay it out, pay it back. And when I pay that, just because I took $3 out, I still, on my life insurance, still says $5 in there. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. I was interested in that the stuff, and I tried to apply for it. Uh, I I ended up needing to pay more because uh, I used to smoke cigarettes and overweight, and it had a lot to do with the health. So mm-hmm. when you were talking about, you know, there's there's plates uh, where if you qualify, uh, I do qualify, but I still cost more than what I want to mm-hmm. invest into at the time. You know, and this is a while yep. back. But yeah, so go go ahead. Yeah, this is interesting because I I I wasn't fully understand understanding how it works, but I, I it, it caught my attention though. This uh, yes. life life whole life insurance. Yes, well, remember whole life is the original version mm-hmm. of it, and remember whole life. The difference between whole life and an index uh, universal life is whole life has a fixed rate. Right. Okay. So, so let's just usually focus on the, the, the index that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, but whole life, but I, I, that's good that you covered it because I know a lot of us have whole life and they've mm-hmm. heard of whole life. Yes. Right. So the difference is like, like I said, whole life has um, a fixed rate, right. With whole life. And then also with whole life policies as well, uh, depending on which company it is, you only get one or the other. If anything happens to you, you don't get both. Mm. Yes. Right. And an index universal life, right. Um, with these companies, you get both. <laughs> mm-hmm. So if anything does happen to you, right, you get the cash value that was building up and the life insurance coverage, right? Okay, okay, and okay. so, yep, exactly. And so there are there are three codes, tax codes, right? Three tax codes that literally prevent us from having to pay taxes, which by the way, guys, if I haven't said it before, I'm so sorry. An index universal life, right, is tax free, which means that you have your uh, it grows tax free. You can have access to it tax free, and if anything happens to you, it can, it's going to be given to your family also tax free. So mm-hmm. of course, if I pass away, right, you know, my daughter and my spouse, they don't have to pay thirty percent in taxes just to access it. Nope. If it's a million dollars, they're going to get a million dollars. Mm-hmm also tax-free, right? And there are three tax codes that literally prevent it uh, from 
uh, us paying taxes, right? And so just in case everybody wants to, to kind of go and look those up, right? There's It's called a 72 ECHO, which is called a TEFRA, the Tax Equity and Fiscal Responsibility Act of 1982. It talks about how the IUL grows tax-free. The 7702 is called the DEFRA, which is the De Deficit Deficit Reduction Act of 1984. Mm -hmm. It talks about how you can have access to your money tax-free. I know that we when we access our 401k or a TSP, we have to pay the taxes. And if we're not 59 and a half yet, we also have to pay the penalty, right? Yes. This one, you don't, right? And then the 101 Alpha, which is called the TAMRA, the Technical and Miscellaneous Revenue Act of 1988. It talks about how the IUL is given to your beneficiary also tax-free when you pass away, right? Mm. So this is the plan that, that Puni was talking about. You can have access to your money and if it's structured properly, you can even have access to your money after that first year, if that's mm -hmm. how you want your plan to be set up. Yeah. A lot of my different clients use this to pay off their mortgages if in like five years. They structure so, it that way. I've heard right? about where they the, can borrow. This is where the rich thinks is kind of because about, you know, uh, what's his name? Waisaki dude. He's, he always says, uh, rich folks, you borrow money. You all, you rather borrow money than get your uh, invest in your own money. And I learned that. You know what I'm saying? I'm 40. I'm 40. I'm in my forties. Uh, I'm, right, I'm right behind money. you, brother. <laughs> I spent money. I spent money that you know, and then the one that had a really good time was the money I didn't. Uh, it wasn't mine. I went ahead and swiped that. You know, what I'm there so, you go, bro. Yep, just, I'm, just I'm right. I'm right there. Yeah, right behind you. Are you talking about Robert Kiyosaki? Yeah, Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah, rich, rich dad, poor dad. dad. There you go. There you go. Yeah, a lot of yeah. Money. Any of your viewers out there? Literally, if you want to learn about this concept and learn about financial literacy, mm -hmm. when it ter in, in terms of this, like get this book, it's called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yes. It's it's one of the number one books that talk about financial literacy, right? The American system and how to think, um, change yeah. your thinking about money. Thought process, exactly. Right? It, because it is mindset. I'm, correct. And that's exactly what I'm trying to... Uh, uh, convey is like how are you and your team able to ch help change the mindset of our coconuts to to think that way because you know people are thinking like you said before oh this is a scam this is a pyramid you know but if you don't have enough of a understanding of what you guys are trying to talk about or put out there everybody automatically thinks especially us Polynesians you know I'm not going to just say Polynesian everybody in the world that everybody hasn't knows. that hasn't received uh that haven't even made six, six figures are going to think the same. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much a lot of people, 98%. The 98% exactly. think exactly. the same way. So don't feel bad, Coconuts. What is your team? How can you be able to, uh, you know, explain to us, well, you know, how 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 can we, uh, what, what are you guys doing or what did you guys uh, come up with to help us change our mindset? Did you guys have a strategy or anything like that? There are a couple ways, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for asking. With your money, right? A lot of people don't think, and I've learned this from before, right? Uh, shout out to Dave Ramsey. I don't know if you guys have ever taken his program too, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. A lot of his concepts are really key as well, right? His debt snowball, like that's super key. I take I take that from him, right? Cash um, is king. <laughs> yeah, cash is king. Exactly, right? But if you if you're listening to him and how he talks, like one of the best things I've I've learned from him is how, um, which I didn't think about before, is your your emotions, right, and your mindset yeah. is attached to money. Correct. It's attached to money, right? There are so many statistics out there. And if, you know, you guys don't know this, but, you know, a lot, there's over 60% of, of people who either get cancer or who get all these different diseases. Mm -hmm. And the leading cause statistically stress. is finances. Stress. Yeah. It's because they're so stressed out about finances, mm -hmm. right? Uh, over 40% of divorces in America yep, are due to finances, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? There's all these different statistics, right? Over 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Why? Mm -hmm. Because of finances, right? And so how are, is, is us and our team, how are we being able to, to help our Polynesian community, help everyone, right? But I know that we, a lot of times we focus in our Polynesian community because that that's our bread and butter for us, right? We know you guys because we are them, right? Every we know how you think. The, every race right? is doing the same thing. Yeah. Exactly. And so guys 
and gals, it's all about mindset. I know it might seem funny to read a book or listen to the Why Ooze podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Or listen to, you know, all these other podcasts on self-development. That's right. Self-development, yep. right? Yep. I know it might seem weird, but I mean, look at my brother here, Poonie, right? He's, he's, he, he's 40, right? But he looks mm -hmm. like he's 21 because if he, I'm pretty sure, right, you can back me up if you, if say, you can stop me if I'm wrong, brother, but you seem like you have a whole new life now started because you started this podcast, right? Because now you're reading books, you're learning new concepts, right? And it's like, you're starting life all over again yeah. because you have a different mindset. And so we literally, right? We literally harp, teach, mentor, coach 80% on mindset. 20% is like all of the rest of the stuff. Okay. Learning how to structure policies, learning how money works, like all the things around finances. Um, but 80%, 80%, sometimes it might even be 95% of mindset and 5% is all the services that have to do around money. Yes. Right. And it's because if we don't get our, if we're not in the right mind to think about the things that we're doing with our money, we're going to go and spend it anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. if you can't handle that $5 or if you can't handle that hundred dollars that you just got paid today and you go and spend it, how in the world is God going to trust us with a million dollars? Right. So if, if we can't handle that small portion and be able to, I always forget what the English word is because I'm so used to saying it, but if we're not able to fool fool what we have now, how are we going to be able to manifest millions of dollars when, you know, God's more like, mm, why would I, why would I bless you with that, that multi-million dollars when you don't even know how to use it? <laughs> right. And mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a personal, that's a personal testimony for myself. I get paid, right. I know a lot of, even in the military, right. Bruh, you get paid on the first and the 15th and you're like, yo, like the first is you already know the first, that's when rent is due. So the 15th, that's party money, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's party money. Right. But it's, it's it's all mindset because it's an emotion that is able to go out when you're spending money, right? Dave Ramsey says, and I know Pudi was agreeing with me, right? When you have cash, it's it's there's an emotion attached to it. If I go over and I give my brother Pudi, if I only made a hundred dollars today, and he's like, "Hey sis, can I borrow like fifty bucks?" and I'm like, oh, "Shoot, well that means I only have fifty bucks until next week." So I'm like. Yeah. There's an emotion attached to me giving him my other $50 bill because now I'm giving it away. Same thing if I'm at a store, right? If I have only $100, you know, my brother Putin's like, hey, hey, sis, you get $100, you know, in the store, you know, at Walmart, you know, but that's all you get, but you can get whatever you want. Say I get shoes, I get clothes, I get food, but I only have $100 and yet my Fakao is like 103 <laughs> And I'm like, brother, come on, give me $3. And he's like, nope, you only had $100. I'm like, man, now I'm kind of depressed because now I got to either put food back. I got to think, right? Either got to put my food back or I got to put my shoes back or I got to put, mm -hmm. you know, my clothes back. It's an emotional feeling. And in order for us to, to have that emotion, it's because we're thinking, now we're thinking in our heads, how can we pay for this? How can I pay for that? How can I pay for this? Right? That's what cash does to us, right? Mm -hmm. Now that we are in, we are in a world where everything is on your phone, right? You can tap now, you can Apple Pay, you can Venmo, you can Cash App, you can Zelle Pay. It it becomes, it's like invisible money. Oh, mm -hmm. pff, I got five hundred dollars on a credit card. Pff, say less. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some new shoes. Tap here. Oh wait, I'm hungry. I'm gonna go eat at Olive Garden. Tap here right? It's invisible money. So there's like no emotion to it. So when we're thinking about this stuff, we should be able to think about what we're thinking. <laughs> I know that sounds weird for us Polynesians. I know, trust me. Right. But if we're actually thinking about what we're thinking, meaning if we're thinking about how to spend our money, right, what is the order of our money? Uh, I know, I don't know if everybody does this, but what I do, right, it's tight, <laughs> tight <and> offerings, <laughs> right? Your 10% tithe and offerings, right? Pay yourself, right? It's not selfish. Even if it's a dollar, even if it's $2, even if it's $4, 50 cents, 
Because if you're doing that with the small things, by the time you do get the $500, thousands, millions, right? Once you get that, it'll be easy. Oh, okay, say less. I already know, you know, I made $100,000 this time around, this this year. So 10% of that, right, is going to go to my Titan offerings, right? And then the other 10%, I'm going to pay myself. And then cool, everything else can go to pay for bills, all mm. that other stuff. So a lot of people think that, I got to pay my rent. I got to pay all my mortgage. I got to pay my bills first before I pay myself. It's like, no, you have to be able to be disciplined to pay yourself first, even if it's a tiny amount and then be able to figure out all the other stuff, right? The bills mm -hmm. thing, you know, anything that all the fun stuff that you want to do. So does that make sense? It's all mindset. It's, it's all mindset, 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 mindset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even absolutely. being an entrepreneur is a mindset thing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, you're yes. absolutely right. It's the same thing with the podcast. Mindset, determination. Um, right. And, you know, you, you got to be willing to do that. I feel like for, I, I can't speak for everybody. It took me literally almost 30 plus years to really have the mindset that we're talking about now. Because, you know, being a coconut, it was, there's so much, uh, steps that I had to go through, you know, first of all, coming to America in the early 2000s, that's the first step, because I was raised in American Samoa too, just trying to navigate around this, you know, country, understand the, the flow of things and how things work, you know, and then it took the time of relationship, you know, with trying to find that right partner, you know, after that, trying to build a family, trying to learn all that part, then finance finally came around afterwards you know it, it literally like it just finally made sense and I feel like maybe some people relate the same way I was because I was always a it was it's not being selfish I was being selfless and I feel like a lot of our coconuts are that are that we're so yes. selfless that we are always giving us you know taking the shirt off our back giving it to somebody else and that's 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 the cause of it so I really like this conversation I, I feel like that uh, it's going to uh, educate our people more about about this whole uh, life insurance because there's still a lot to learn. And I know you guys got classes, right, Savannah? Uh, you guys do online uh, conferences, stuff like that? I do. I mean, um, a lot of our different trainings, you know, and what we do uh, when we're educating people, uh, I also, you know, give back into me, like you were just saying, right? Like we give mm -hmm. so much of ourselves as Polynesians just because... Just that's how we were raised. That's how our culture is, right? So um, I'm hugely involved in the community and being able to give classes and workshops, um, starting from our high school level kids all the way up into, nice, nice. you know, our churches um, and then any of the other community partners that I partner with. Mm -hmm. A lot of our other team members on our team do the same, right? We're partnering with different, we're collaborating with different businesses that are local, but also different businesses online, like all of our Polynesians, like we are right now with YUs. Right. And being able to offer these services to all of our people. Yes. And one of the biggest things uh, that they always ask is like, OK, how much is it? Crazy thing is, is it's complimentary. Why? Because how am I going to how am I going to well, one, how am I going to charge somebody who it's not, it's I'm not judging, but it's like if you're seeking information about finances, it's because you're hurting on finances or you want to yeah. know more. Right. That's so nice. for me, it's like before I'm like, how am I going to go and pay somebody to tell me how broke I am? If I'm already broke, you know what I mean? Like yeah, I'm trying yeah. to go to this person to ask them, Hey, how do I not be broke? But I'm about to give you, you know, an X amount of money to tell me that I'm broke. You know, I, I that's just yeah. that concept to us is just crazy. And I know people out there still got to make their money. They still got to charge. I know that there's, you know, there's our, there are higher level people who will pay that money to make sure that they're their assets and stuff are taken care of. I, I understand that. But what about our middle class? You know, what about us, yeah. us lower class uh, individuals who are just trying to make it and figure out our way uh, to the top? And, you know, what about uh, our, our people? <laughs> yeah. Right. What, what services are out there for us? And so what would you call it? Um, I could send out my information to you. It'll literally give you guys access to, to me and my entire team. Uh, we can always hop on uh, a group call or we can always hop on um, 
if you guys know anybody or any of the community events that we can come to you and literally just share this information with you guys. Um, because ultimately everybody always thinks, by the way, it's a one size fits all, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Everybody's financial situation is different. Yeah, Everyone. Like that. Yep, that is true. Everyone. So it's like, you know, Poonie's, Poonie's situation is completely different from mine. So yes. a lot of times, a lot of people will ask me, I was like, can you just give me like a quote, like off the top of your head? I was like, I, I can't, He's like, I can't. It's like, oh, how much is for like a million dollar policy? I was like, I can't give that to you either. Like we have to be able to sit down. Right. And, but think about it. All of us, it's not even just us, everyone. And I say everyone as in everyone around the world, right? Most people, especially here in America, the number one topic they don't want to talk about money is money. Yep. And most of the time, why is that? Is because uh, uh, almost everyone associates money with social class, mm -hmm. right? Or they'll basically, I'm not, I'm not saying we do this, but I'm saying basically they are judging us on how much we make, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, it's it's almost like a what do you call that? Like it's a, a forbidden. It's a forbidden yeah. thing to to ask somebody with how much they make. Uh, or it's like um offensive, right? Yeah, it's it like is, I was yeah. like, hey booty, how much you uh how much you make off of the podcast? And you're like, I mean, that's a different conversation, sis. Like we could tell you know what I mean. Like it's it's not I'm not saying it that's what you do, but yeah. when we start to talk to people, like, tell them, man, how much do you make? You're like, oh, uh, you know, and which is a lot of coconut. I, I was in that area too. Like, oh man, that's cool. How much you make? Not yeah, knowing. Me too. <laughs> Not knowing. <laughs> me too, like, right? Oh, but it's all it's all was... about just uh, and it was it was it was crazy. It there was a communications class that I took. It was one of my favorite classes, and there was a an activity that she did with our whole class, and it was to fill out this thing, and then we had a partner, and we had to ask them about, um rating from one to five different topics that you would like to talk about five being the most talked about topic and one being the least amount there was one question there that had to do with finances every single one of uh, us who are in the class put one on the finance question mm -hmm. and so she had talked about right and that was a conversation that we had was why did everybody you know she'd asked why did everybody put a, like a one like the least talked about is finances and it's because we associate finances with like social status, like, oh, okay, hey, Puni's making like six figures, and they're like, oh, shoot, like, that means Puni's like making it, right? But what if behind the scenes, you know, you, you're you like, man, I got, I'm paying off all this stuff, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, yes, you're making six figures, but nobody knows what your situation is. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff that you have to pay because you're not, you know, sometimes it's that's just like professionals, movie stars, anybody, you know, you got a team behind her. So there's, there's a group of people that you, you need, you need to go ahead and pay. It's just no different from like, uh, what's his name? Us Libre, you know, with his, uh, concrete, uh, business. He, yes. he, when that money comes in, he still got a lot of those equipments that, that he's using to get the business done. He's got to pay those off. That's no different from human beings. You know, you might have a team that, that comes in. Oh, what's the what's the actress? Remember the 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 Melody one, the one that started crying. She's real famous because she said like, you know, I don't make a lot of money. It was it was recently too. The the one that oh, man, not really, have you ever watched the um, Power or uh, the Lion Lucia's Lion, the rapper Cookie, the actress. Um, her. I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, but remember, oh remember her her. When she when she was uh she was crying on one of the interviews and she was just saying like look it made to to Taraz or something like that uh yep uh yeah. Tarazi Henson yes yep. yeah and Taraji you know, Taraji there you go <laughs> yeah. and you know because even I thought she was making so much like she was that like the uh, Brad Pitt or Dwayne Johnson's uh female and she's like and the fact that she's uh put the spotlight on it like look man. I don't make that much. And after yep. that two million, you break that down. We got a whole bunch of staff behind me to make this to make who she, it's the same concept. So yep. no, that's my point. It's just the same concept. Uh it could be just an individual like myself, for example. You know, I got a wife, kids, and and a whole lot of families that that six figure comes and it there's it breaks apart <laughs> real fast. Yep. Six yep. figures nowadays is like you know, fifty thousand now currently. It is. It's it nice. is, especially you know, inflation is going up, you know, and I always tell people 
inflation is going up, excuse me, inflation is going up, right? And I always ask, I always ask any of my clients that I sit with, like, do you think taxes are going to go up or down in the future? And every single one of them, 100%, they're going to go up. And I'm like, exactly. Mm -hmm. So right now it might be 30%, but if you're going to, you know, if you're going to keep using your 401k and stuff, I just want to make sure you're educated on it. In 20 years, do you really think it's still going to be 30%? Mm-hmm. And then one more thing before we close sure. out, you, you mentioned, sure. you mentioned, um, you know, you have to sit down with them, you know, break a little bit more of in like, like there's a reason why you need to have a sit down with them because everybody is different. That's a great point. Yes. Because I can literally, there's some people that I could talk to. Like mm-hmm. I could talk to, to you Puni, and be like, Hey, I do this, this, and this. And you're like, okay. But if you don't understand it, then you won't see the value in what we do. Yes. You won't see the value in your plan. Mm-hmm. So if you sit down with, with me or any of my business partners, right. And we have a one-on-one, like I said, I have to be able to tailor your plan to you and customize it. Mm-hmm. Everybody is different. Like I said before, right. There's not a one size fits all, right. My plan won't work for everyone, which means mm-hmm. that I do have to get information from you. I also want to make sure that you know the, you know, the the business that I do, you know, the services that I offer, right? Because although my services are complimentary, right? I work off of referrals, right? Cool. I was able to help Booney and his family. Cool. Booney's going to go tell Queen and be like, hey, yo, Queen, you know, Savannah was able to help me with my stuff. And, you know, Queen, but like, oh, cool. I'll go sit down with her. You see, it's a referral based process, right? But it's, it's so crazy that a lot of people are so scared to refer other people. But I had just put this on my Facebook a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, we use the referral program every day. Mm-hmm. Every day. Yes. Do we recruit people? Absolutely. Literally, we're recruiting people every day. McDonald's recruits people. Amazon, yep. they recruit people. Right. We're recruiting people <laughs> to to come to the podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like we're recruiting every day, but we're also referring people every day. So in order for you to understand exactly what it is that I do, I do need you to sit down with me one-on-one. Mm-hmm. You do need to come on, a, on an appointment and sit down because again, you won't be able to find that plan just by me talking to you. I need to show you some information, show you that we're backed by accredited institutions. And yeah. I promise you, I didn't just make this stuff up in my attic and like, you know, (laughs) I just kind of just wanted to tell you guys, uh, you know, I I made it up all by myself. Like, no, these concepts have been around for so long. And so I want to be able to make sure that you're educated because you won't move forward, you know, with any plans, you won't see any services unless you know what the value is and how the value will benefit you and your family. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and leave uh, the, you know, if you want to get a hold of Savannah and her team, well, Savannah is going to go ahead and drop the link and we'll have the link on our podcast too and and everywhere, our social media and stuff. So that way people are aware and stuff. Man, I had a, I, it was really informative. You know what I'm saying? We can definitely get you back on the pod and have more conversations about this. Maybe make this like a whole little, you know, what do they call that thing? Uh, it's like a trail, trail or something, you know, where you come in, jump back in, update us, and you know, with some new stuff, stuff like that. But yeah, yeah you know, I appreciate you getting on the pod here, Savannah. And for those the listeners, man, you know what time it is. It's merch time, baby. You know, we got our merch out. <laughs> if you enjoy our content, man, this is what this is what keeps the lights on for Why Oops Podcast. Uh, we're just a uh, Regular folks, man, doing the thing that we're doing that we love. You know, Savannah's doing her thing promoting life insurance to our coconuts. And I'm over here letting our coconuts know that, man, there's more to life. Do a podcast. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You have, you have any closeout remarks just before we go ahead and head out here? Uh well, one, thank you so much to Puni and the entire Y Oos uh podcast staff and you know committee. Uh, for allowing me to even just share this information to not even just our Polynesian community, our Samoan community, but to everyone out there who literally subscribes to this podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It takes a lot of guts, one, right, to be completely straight. And it takes a lot of uh, mindset changing to be able to even put this on for you guys, right? But Mm -hmm. nobody, 
uh, it's very rare that you'll have people out there who are talking about this stuff, the real life stuff with real life people. Yeah. Um, and with, especially with people who look like you, right. Who look like us, the um, but there are people it. out there. Exactly. Right. So that's why there are people out there. So thank you so much to Puni and their entire team. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, a closeout, right? Yes. We're entrepreneurs, right? Me and Puni. Uh, yes, I do finances. The difference, right, between us and you guys is we went all in, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And what I yeah. say by we went all in is, yes, you're standing on a cliff and you're figuring out if you want to jump in and see if the water is great down there or if you want to stay at the top and say, mm, I'm actually very comfortable up here. I'll just swim in the the, the lake that's right here. I don't mm -hmm. want to see what's out there in the ocean, Right. And so we took a leap of faith, right? You have to have a vision for where you're going. Yes. You can't just be living through life, waiting to retire. Please, I really hope that you're not doing that, right? I really hope that you're not just working just to work and just to wait to retire until you're 59 and a half. You know, please make sure you have a vision, you know, have dreams and goals. You know, I, I already see it and it got me fired up with my brother Puni here because it, I, like I said, it seems as if he literally is starting life all over since starting the podcast, changing his mindset. Uh, he don't look 40, right? And so thank you, thank you. it's not too late to have your dreams and goals put in front of you and to have a vision. You, you could be 40, you could be 50. I have business partners who are 80, 80 years old, and it feels like they have literally started a new life just because they have changed their mindset and their mentality. So literally don't give up win anyways embrace the suck and thank you guys again so much for having me on i appreciate it mm, i love that embrace the suck y'all <laughs> embrace the suck because it takes a lot of work man thank you so much savannah i'm your boy pretty more sister savannah here and we are out baby why 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 why